For over 65 episodes, Kiaya and Daniel have been here sharing great literature for kids and adolescents. It's time to sit back, relax, and get cozy, because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel. Once and Wednesdays continue today on Let's Get Cozy, because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel. Kiaya and I are very excited to be sharing of the Watsons Go to Birmingham 1963. Nazi parachutes attack America and get shot down over the Flint River by Captain Byron Watson and his flamethrower of death. It all starts now on Let's Get Cozy, because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel. Hi, my name is Donnell Carter, certified personal trainer through National Academy of Sports Medicine and certified nutrition coach through Precision Nutrition. I'm here today to talk to you about online personal training, the future of personal training right on your phone. We start the week with an overview and progress reports. Following that, we have our calendar, day three, four, five different workouts. Further in depth, we see exactly what we're doing for the day. Find out more information, contact me. Stories are such an important part of our lives. Join my friend Kiaya and I for Get Cozy, because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel, where we share some of the greatest picture books and chapters from children's and young adult literature to inspire you to keep embedding literacy into your days. attack America and get shot down over the Flint River by Captain Byron Watson and his flamethrower of death. I know, it's really exciting. Byron got caught lighting matches again, and it looked like this time Mama was going to do what she always said she would. That's when Joetta turned on the tears and cried and begged so much that Mama let him off. She swore to him, though, that the next time he got caught starting fires, she was going to burn him. She told us that same sad old story about how when she was a little girl, her house caught on fire, and for two years after that she smelled, after that she and her brothers had to wear clothes that smelled like smoke. Even though the story made Mama and Joey get all sad and sobby, it was kind of funny to me and Bai. We'd heard it so many times that Byron even gave the story a name. He called it Mama's Smokey the Bear story. I won't have you putting this family in danger. Just once more, Byron Watson, one more time, and you're burned. Then to show Byron how serious she was, Mama raised her right hand and said, I swear that with God is my witness. Bai got, um, got put on punishment for a month, but even before a week was gone, he started up again. I was up in the bedroom looking at comic books when I heard Byron go into the bathroom and lock the door. I knew something was up since he only locked the door when he had something to hide. I sneaked to the bathroom door and peeked through the keyhole. Bai was pretending he was making a movie called Nazi Parachutes Attack America and Get Shut Down Over the Flint River by Captain Byron Watson and his flamethrower of death. I could see that he made a bunch of little toilet paper parachutes, and when he yelled, Action! He set one of them on fire and dropped it over the toilet. The guy in the Nazi parachute screamed as he floated down in flames and landed in the water with a loud hiss. Before the parachutist was dead, Bai would flush the toilet, and the Nazi would go down the drain going, Glug, glug, glug. When the water was swirling him away, Byron said the only Nazi talk he knew. You hold mine fewer, off be your same. Peeking through the keyhole, I could see Byron salute to the parachute. When he flushed the toilet, such a brave soldier deserves our respect, he said. So we gave him a burial at sea. The toilet stopped clugging, and Byron said, Not bad. Let's have a little more screaming on the way down, and how about having the flamethrower of death turned up a little bit? He picked up another toilet paper parachute, lit two matches at the same time, and set the parachute on fire and yelled, Take two! And sent the next Nazi screaming into the toilet. 
Byron was on take seven when Mama finally wondered why the toilet was being flushed so much and came upstairs to see what was going on. The hole upstairs smelled like a giant match and she knew something was fishy even before she got to the top step. She moved so quick and quiet that I still had my eyeball on the keyhole when she stepped into the hallway. I looked up and there she was. Mama, I... I knew I was going to get it for not turning Byron in and in, but before I could say anything else, Mama pushed me out of the way and hit the bathroom door with her shoulder like Elliot Ness, the cop on that Untouchables TV show. The door jumped out of her way and banged into the bathtub. Byron turned around and screamed. Nazi number seven was on... Nazi number seven hit the water with a hiss. Byron threw his hands up in the air and said, Mama, I... Mama snatched Byron's neck, and stopping just to pick up the matches that Byron had dropped, she dragged him all the way down the stairs. I could see that Mama had forgotten all about me, so I followed right behind. As they went down, Bai's feet touched the steps only one or two times. He looked like one of those ballerinas that danced just on the tips of their toes. Mama had her hand around his throat like it was a baseball bat and holding him up in the air. I never knew Mama was so strong. They danced into the living room and Joey started looking nervous. She ran over and huddled up next to me. Mama's eyes got slitty with the eyeballs shooting around from side to side. It was almost too scary to watch, but I kept looking, since I knew there was going to be some real big action this time. Joey grabbed a hold of my arm and said, What's going on? What did he do? She was starting to get jumpy because she'd never seen Mama so mad either. I kind of felt sorry for Byron because Mama hadn't let go of his neck. Even, and even though he was a lot older, we could tell he was just as scared as me and Joetta. He kept pretending he was daddy cool, though, and the only way you could tell he was scared to death was by looking at his eyes. Mama kept her hand on Byron's neck and pushed him down on the couch and stood right in front of him. She opened the hand that had been choking him and looked at the matches she picked up off the bathroom floor. While one hand had been strangling Byron, the other hand had been strangling the matches. The matches were soaking wet, because whenever Mama got scared or nervous or mad, her hands got real sweaty and disgusting. Mama's voice got real strange, hissing like a snake. Joetta, go out to the kitchen and bring me a book of matches. But Mommy, Joey said, starting to get all sobby. Joetta, do what I told you. Mommy, I can't. The tears really started coming, and Joey was squeezing my arm. Joetta, go get those matches. Please, Mommy, he won't do it again, will you, Byron? Promise her. Promise, Mommy, you won't do it again. Kenneth, she turned to me. Go get some matches. This is what I was afraid of. If I didn't go get the matches, I was going to be in worse trouble than I already was with Mama. And if I did go get the matches, I knew Byron would kill me as soon as he got back from the hospital. Mama, I... Move, young man. Mama, wait a minute. I can't move. Joey's got me by the arm, and if I move... Mama pointed her finger at Byron and said, Don't you move a muscle. We could all tell Mama was super mad because she started talking in that southern-style accent. Byron nodded his head, and Mama let go of his throat and stormed into the kitchen. Old Mr. Cool still had a had great big bug eyes, and as soon as Mama's hand left his neck, his own hands came up and started choking him themselves. Ooh, Byron, you better get out of here. Go down to Buffheads till Dad gets home. He's probably going to whip you, but Mama's really going to burn you, I told him. Please, Byron, run. Get out of here. Joey let go of my arm and ran over to Byron and tried to pull his fingers from around his throat. Can't you tell she's not playing? Joey kept pulling at his hand, but it looked like Byron was hypnotized, and he wouldn't move. We all nearly jumped through the roof when we, when the snake woman voice came back into the room and said, Joetta, move away from him. Mama was carrying a piece of paper towel, a jar of Vaseline, and a band-aid, in one hand and a fresh, dry book of matches in the other. She wasn't even going to take him to the hospital. She was going to set him on fire, then patch him up right at home. Joetta saw the Vaseline and went crazy. Oh no, Mommy, let Daddy whip him, please, please. Joey began pulling her braids and stamping her feet up and down. Please don't set him on fire. 
Her face was all wet and twisted up, and she looked like a real nut. It was hard to do, but I kind of felt sorry for Byron. Though, not too sorry, because I knew he deserved whatever happened. First, because he had a chance to escape and didn't take it, and second, because he was being ba a bad influence on me. Nazi parachutes attack America and get shot down over the Flint River by Captain Byron Watson and his flamethrower of death? Looked like a real cool movie for me to make, too. If Mama just gave Byron some stupid punishment, then maybe it would be worth it for me to flush some Nazis down the drain myself. But, if you got set on fire for doing it, the movie wasn't worth making. So, while I felt sorry for Byron because of what was going to happen to him, I did want to see if Mama was going to keep her word and wondered what part of him she'd burn. His face? His hair? Maybe she'd just set him, scare him by setting his clothes on fire while he was in them. But if she was just going to set his clothes on fire, why did she need Vaseline? I knew Mama was going for skin. Joetta, move away! Mama's voice still sounded strange. Joey spread her arms out to the side like a traffic cop and stood between Mama and Byron. No, Mommy! Wait! Mama gently set Joey to the side, but Joetta kept hopping back with her arms spread to protect Daddy Cool. They wrestled like this a couple of times before Mama finally set all the burning equipment down and sat on the coffee table and pulled Joey into her lap. She wiped Joey's stupid tears away with the paper towel and rocked her back and forth a couple of times, going, Shh, honey, shh. When Joey finally stopped crying and blew her nose, Mama said, Sweetheart, I'm so proud of you. I know you're trying to protect your brother, and that's a good thing. I know you don't want to see him get hurt, right? Joey sniffed and said, No, Mommy. But honey, some of the time, Mama has to do things she doesn't want to do. Now you really don't think I want to hurt Byron, do you? Joey had to think about this. The matches and the first date stuff and the crazy look Mama had in her eyes made it seem like hurting Byron was exactly what Mama wanted to do. After Joey didn't say anything, Mama had to answer the question herself. No, dear. Mama doesn't want to hurt Byron. But I don't want you going to school smelling like smoke, either. And I don't want to see you or Kenneth or Daddy or Blackie or Tyker or Flipper or Flapper get burned up, either. And if that boy... Mama's voice got strange again and we all looked over at Byron, who was still being held on the couch by his own hands. If that boy sets this house on fire with his nonsense, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mama's real voice was coming back. So, Joetta... Don't you see how Mama has to help Byron understand how dangerous and painful fire can be? Don't you see we've tried everything and nothing seems to get through that rock head of his? Joetta thought about her stupid cat and goldfish getting burned up, and looked kind of hard over at Byron. But look at him, Mommy! He's really, really scared this time! Maybe he won't! Joetta, he's not that scared. Yet. Then Mama dropped the bomb on Joey. Besides, don't you remember, sweetheart? Don't you remember when this happened last week, I swore to God that if Byron did it again, I would burn him? What do you think? What do you think? Do you think I should break my word to God? Joey was at the age when you're real religious. She went to Sunday school three days a week. Huh, honey? Should I break my word to God? No, Mommy. Joey said, then she scrunched her face up like, she, like she was eating something sour and cried out, Since you promised, I guess you gotta do it. She took a giant breath, then sobbed. Go ahead. Burn him up. Joey climbed off Mama's lap, and Byron's eyes got bigger and bigger, but his traitor hands kept him pinned to the couch. But please, Mommy, don't burn him too bad, okay? Please? Please? Joey was starting up again. Don't worry, sweetheart. I won't. I'm just going to burn his fingers enough so he won't be tempted by fire ever again. Those were like magic words. They snapped Byron right out of the spell Mama put on him. It was like his hand said, Fingers? Did she say she was going to burn someone's fingers? Because when they found out it was them that was going to get burned, they let go of Byron's throat and joined the rest of his body, deciding to wait at Buffheads until 
dad got home, Byron was fast, Mama was faster. He didn't even make it out of the living room before Mama tackled him. Mama sure is a real good athlete. She sat on his chest and said, Not this time, Buster. This time, you pay. She said, Buster. Byron squirmed around for a second and then did something I'd only seen him do a couple of times before. He started crying. Mama lit a match and grabbed Byron by the wrist and said, Put your finger out. I couldn't believe it. Bye's finger popped right out. I, I couldn't believe it. Mama's horrible. Snake Woman voice came out again and again and said, If you ever... Ever, the match got closer and closer to Byron's skinny brown finger. Play with. No, if you ever even look at. Byron's hand was shaking and he was crying like a big baby, but his finger still stayed out. Another match in this house. The match was getting closer and closer. And I knew that Byron could feel the heat. I will personally, by myself. It was so close now that I thought I could hear the sweat on Byron's finger getting turned into steam and going, Psst. I will not just burn one finger, I will burn your entire hand and then send you to the juvenile home. Byron closed his eyes and screamed. Right when the fire was going to give him a good roasting, Joetta ran across the room, and sounding like that little engine that could, she blew the match out before it got him. She thought she missed, though, because she kept, she stood there, huffing and puffing and patooing at the match, even after it went out. Mama's hand, Byron's finger, and the match were covered in Joey's slob. Honey, we agreed, didn't we? Yes, Mommy, Joey looked down and said, but I thought you got him. Not yet, sweetheart, but I'm going to. Four more times, Mama lit a match, and four more times, Joey patooed them out. Finally, Mama got sick of having slob all over her hand and gave up. That night, Byron had to deal with Dad. No picnic, but a lot better of an ending to his Nazi parachute movie than Captain Byron Watson gets captured and burned alive by the evil snake woman with his own flamethrower of death. Yaya and I hope you enjoy Chapter 5 of The Watsons Go to Birmingham. I always love the imagery and the movie image that comes up in my head as I read these phenomenal words of Christopher Paul Curtis in this phenomenal book. Watson Wednesdays will continue next week with Chapter 6, Swedish Creams and Welfare Cheese. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another episode of Get Cozy. Because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel. Be safe, be healthy, keep reading. Because reading is power. <laughs>